Ever since I was a young girl, I fit the norm of being quite feminine. As a matter of fact, I have seen videos of three-year-old me complaining that my shoes didn't match my dress, which meant I could not step out of the house. On the other hand, one of my best friends was quite the opposite as a child. She loved to run around outside in the mud and chase after animals all day long. Who's to say that either one of these personalities is correct? Well, if 12-year-old me were standing in front of you right now, she would be one of the bigoted people to argue that only my way of being was correct. Fortunately, I have since evolved and realized the necessity to embrace all human beings, regardless of they, how they want to be. However, the same cannot be said of many individuals in our society today, even amongst the female community. The idea of feminism has brought together men and women who embrace the idea of gender equality and recognize the trappings of gender roles. Unfortunately, this endorsement does not even account for half the population, since feminism has suffered the unfortunate misinterpretation that puts down the concept when it is nothing but a call for a political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. Though misogynists account for a majority of this problem, the rejection and misinterpretation of feminism by the female community is the most unexpected and upsetting phenomenon. Media doesn't help with this tendency either. For example, many of us may have seen the movie The Princess Diaries, which is an almost universally adored film. Though the movie does not have a derogatory message to begin with, it portrays Mia, the main character, going through a makeover which essentially just consists of her going from having curly hair to straight hair and the removal of her glasses. This makeover was intended to give her a more feminine or popular look. Even though I truly adore this movie, this scene promotes the idea of only one type of beauty. It puts limitations on the girls that might not exactly fit this standard and feel like they are, not they are not adequate because of something like this. Some of us may have also heard of the Like a Girl campaign by Always. In this campaign, the company did an experiment in which they asked girls to perform daily actions but do so like a girl. It was disappointing to find that the majority of the girls who participated in this experiment performed the actions in a derogatory feminine way and did not even realize that they had been conditioned to think that they were somehow incapable or inadequate per of performing the action in an actual efficient way. Many of the time, girls do not realize that they're putting each other down and putting others down. And this is a problem that we have in society that's extremely widespread. So what mechanisms are set in place that allow for the shaming and exploitation of females to begin with? The most powerful and well-known instrument is rape culture. While we are not a society that outwardly promotes rape culture, we live in one that excuses or tolerates sexual violence. We attempt to justify violent actions against women by claiming that they were somehow asking for it by the way that they were dressed or acting. This concept is not only adopted by men, but also several women. They forget to address that no human being deserves to have their fundamental rights infringed upon merely because they don't fit the limited standards of a certain society, especially when girls who are even dressed appropriately for their customs, such as in countries like India who have strict social norms to begin with, suffer the same tragedies. A journalist in India went around on the streets and asked men if they would let their sons marry a rape victim. The majority of the older men answered no, and the journalist reiterated that the girl was the victim and not the perpetrator. Unfortunately, the answers didn't change because the men believed that the girl had somehow become impure. The most unfortunate thing in the video, however, was the fact that a woman was interviewed and asked the same question as well, and her response was the same as the men who said that they would stray away from association of rape victims. When girls hear something like this from mothers, grandmothers, or any female adult in their life that they might even look up to, it just lends to the feelings of helplessness and it brings a decline to their self-esteem. Many of the time, we hear about girls rec not receiving a proper education, and Malala Yousafzai, who is now world-renowned, was a victim of the same phenomenon. 
Malala was attacked on a school bus by the Taliban because she had previously spoken out against the Taliban's attempts at depriving her and so many other young Pakistani girls from receiving an education. Malala, like so many of us, just wanted to receive a proper education. And while we have that opportunity, girls like Malala did not. Fortunately, Malala is, has now recovered and serves as an international symbol of an empowered young woman. Malala had the strong support system that lent it, let her pursue whatever she wanted to and allowed her to go through her life and get the proper education. Unfortunately, many girls are not privileged with this same phenomenon. In the rural parts of countries like India, Nepal, Pakistan, etc., there are customs that lean towards granting education for only boys. This phenomenon is often adopted by mothers, grandmothers, and female figures who believe that the girl is only to be stayed in the household and serve as a housewife or a homemaker. They don't believe that she has the same right to pursue a career that they might encourage their sons to pursue. When girls hear something like this, it only leads to declining their self-esteem. Now, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with girls who want to be housewives and homemakers. There is nothing wrong with choosing a lifestyle in which you feel most comfortable. The actual problem lies in the fact that girls are being limited into this sort of culture and don't have the chance to expand. They don't have the opportunities that so many people do to go out and explore and see what they might be potentially interested in because they don't have a strong network of women supporting them to begin with. People come in all shapes, sizes, and have varying personalities. So the prevalence of this in the female community is something to be embraced rather than rejected. Furthermore, the idea of what is acceptable in one society could completely differ from that of another society. For example, in this political cartoon, we see that the woman in the burqa believes that the woman in the bikini is a victim of a male-dominated culture because of the way she is dressed. However, the woman in the bikini feels the same way towards the woman in the burqa. Therefore, as a society, and specifically females, it is not our job to criticize others for the way they act or dress or even portray themselves. It is our job to encourage one another and continually endorse the fact that people are going to be different, but that doesn't change the fact that you are who you are. I have been fortunate enough to attend a school where there is an extremely diverse population, and I was able to meet many people from different backgrounds, cultures, and varying minds and concepts that they um, adopted. So because of this, I think that I'm really shaped into a new human being. So. I'm glad that it's not 12-year-old me standing in front of you today attempting to preach something about how only my way is, of being was correct as opposed to that of one of my best friends. Because the true beauty of the world lies in the fact that there is so much diversity around us and it lies in the fact that we need to embrace it and accept it so all human beings feel as if they are a part of something. Thank you.